Stephen, you said that Nicola Sturgeon was your inspiration. You lead the SNP in Westminster, but when did you hear she was actually going to quit? Yeah, Nicola was indeed uh, an inspiration for myself and for for so many so many others. I I found out very early uh, on Wednesday morning uh, what was to come that day, uh, and like everyone, I was I was very disappointed. And what did you feel? I mean, disappointment, yeah. surprise, shock. Had there been any discussion in the party about it? Yeah, yeah, shock, disappointment. I was I was gutted to, to put it simply. Uh, Nicola was an inspirational leader, not just of the Scottish National Party, but of the Scottish Government too. Uh, her warmth, her empathy, her humility and indeed her honesty was all on show on Wednesday as it, as it has been throughout her reign. So to see her step away was, was deeply disappointing. Some people though, and she even acknowledged this speech in her speech herself, some people saw her as a divisive person too. I mean, do you think it is important and will it be difficult for the party to move on? I think there's always that, that inevitability in politics. The more you're at the front line, the more people will draw conclusions as, mm. as to who you are and formulate uh, opinions. But this is now a, an exciting moment for our party. We have the opportunity for change. Mm. I'm looking forward to seeing who comes forward from my colleagues in Holyrood and hopefully we can move forward together. And we'll talk about that a bit later on. Um um, let's talk about Nicola Sturgeon then, because that really has been a huge event uh, in British politics in the last few days. Um, two contenders have now gone out there and said that they'll mm. run. And we can show the audience images, first of all, of Hamza Youssef, who's the Scottish Health Secretary, and also Ash Reagan, who was part of the SNP front bench, but quit over the controversial gender reforms. Um, Stephen, the interesting thing about this is, despite Nicola Sturgeon's many successes, she was very good at making a succession plan, was she? There's no obvious <laughs> contender. No, I, I, would, I would contest that, and I would contest that wholeheartedly, because if you actually look at Holyrood, what we have is a number of individuals who have many good skills. They're excellent communicators. They've got extreme experience of being in government in difficult times. And of Who's course, standing out then for you? Well, well I, I'm not going to I'm not going to uh, pull pull uh, pull my uh, my views out of the the hat at this moment in time. I'll see who comes forward. There's still time for for more people to come forward. But what I want to see from them is a clear plan in terms of how we approach uh, becoming uh, an independent country. I want them to outline how they intend to deal with some of the challenges uh, mm -hmm. that we face at home because there is understandable challenges uh, at home and they, they need to do that and they need to do that uh, in the fullness of time. Let's look at what it might mean for politics wider. So John Curtis, the polling guru, has told mm. the Sun this morning, he's got his giant calculator out and he reckons that actually Nicola Sturgeon's departure might give Keir Starmer a majority of 25. It's a gift for Labour, isn't it, her going? I, I, absolutely not. And if you look at the poll which came out last night, the first poll on the back of Nicola's uh, departure or announcement uh, that she'd be leaving office, it showed that the vote for the SNP was sitting at 43 percent, just a little bit, a tiny little bit down mm -hmm. from where we were in 2019. All that's happened is the Labour Party has replaced the Conservatives in second place in Scotland. Now, I know that many unionists, many unionists want to think that the SNP are going to go away now, but I've got a message for them. We're not. We want Scotland to be a healthier, fairer and more equal place. We want to utilise our energy resources to deliver for the people of Scotland. It's absurd that in an energy rich nation, the people of Scotland are fuel poor. We can solve those problems. We can rejoin the European Union as an independent nation. And we're just getting started, Laura. We're just, we're getting, just getting started. started. Well, we will see. Well, the campaign for the leader is getting started, <laughs> and, and hopefully, we'll have some of the contenders in the uh, for that job in the studio in the next few weeks. Now, now, we've had a question from our viewer Richard. We do read your emails, remember, and he wants to know why did the SNP come on and only talk about Brexit and independence? So, Stephen, I'm going to ask you about something else. Hugh Jackman said that Australia should be a republic. Would an independent Scotland be a republic or want to keep the monarchy? I, I think Hugh Jackman said in time uh, through <laughs> a, an evolutionary process that may come to pass and I, I would probably be quite sympathetic to a similar uh, evolution in Scotland in time, yeah. That's interesting because in the last independence referendum, I remember the SNP said very clearly they'd like to keep the Queen, but that's a different uh, no, position. No, I, no, no, I'm, I'm quite happy with, with the status quo as it stands, but over time it may well be that the people of Scotland decide for an alternate vision, but that'll be for the people of Scotland to determine. Okay.